Hello everybody. Uh, today I will discuss the second component of the introduction to material processing that is the basics of the heat conduction. As you know that uh, the heat conduction and fluid flow or I can say the material flow is actually very important uh, in the perspective of the different manufacturing processes and we can find out that uh, all manufacturing processes is basically there is the involvement of the application of the heat to transform from one form to another form. So that is why it is also necessary to understand the basics of the heat conduction which I will be teaching uh, in this particular uh, module such that you will be able to analyze the different manufacturing process or you can apply the understanding of the heat conductions in the different manufacturing processes uh, specific to welding casting and the metal forming process. So that is the purpose and I am just trying to, un trying to explain you what is the this, uh, basics of the heat conduction associated with or in the applied to the different manufacturing processes. So thermodynamics and heat transfer that you have started in the very basic the thermodynamics course maybe in the very the beginning of your course curriculum and what we understand that during the transformation from one equilibrium uh, phase to another uh, some other phase in that cases definitely it involves some amount of the heat involved. So therefore in that case thermodynamics actually uh, form the basic framework between the heat transfer and the energy balance. So, whatever uh, the different laws of uh, thermodynamics, we try to the specific to first law of thermodynamics is basically we try to explain the balance of the energy and that is associated with the heat energy. So, therefore, we can say that heat is the form of the energy that is transformed by the temperature difference between the two bodies. So, heat transfer will basically occurs when there is a some potential difference exists. So, you know the current flow will occur when there is a voltage or potential difference exists. Here also heat transfer will occur, occur between these two bodies when there is a some temperature difference exists. Now, usually heat transfer occurs from the higher temperature to the low temperature a body and this phenomena will try to explain in terms of the law, different law and uh, the with the uh, application of the in the very practical examples. Now, when you are talking about the thermodynamics is actually tells us the amount of the heat required. Here we have clearly mentioned that heat actually amount of the heat required for the transformation, but it is does not tell about the how much time it is required to transfer the heat uh, from one body to another body. See not telling about the time component uh, in this case. So therefore, we try to look into the rate of the heat transfer you can quantify then to some extent understanding this thing that it can tells about the, the time required for a particular system to reach one particular temperature. So in that sense we can say that science of the heat transfer is basically focused on the rates, rate of the heat transfer which is flow with that one medium to another medium or the same medium from one body to another body or maybe we can say that from one surface to another surface the how the heat transfer occurs and which is associated with definitely some temperature difference must be exist when the heat transfer will occur from one body to another body or from one surface to another surface or between the two mediums also. Therefore, we can say in general the thermodynamics deals only the amount of the heat but not exclusively the amount of the or time required to reach from one temperature to another temperature. I can take an example also. So, in this case the amount of the heat flow from iron ingot that means from iron component of mass 5 kg and that is quenching, quenching means from high temperature to the uh, low temperature. So, we can heated sample we just put in the, uh, in the solution it can be oil and this uh, any other or maybe water also and that is typically called as the quenching process. So, from higher temperature to low temperature will be reaching so definitely it will be losing some amount of the heat. So, since there is a temperature difference from higher temperature to low temperature. So, here uh, of course, it is given an oil bath. So, it is already mentioned the medium also which medium we just put with the heated sample. So, therefore, amount of the heat we can see calculate that M, C and delta T. So, here the uh, M is the mass is given, C is the specific heat also given. So, mass is 5 kg specific heat given 0 0.45 kilo joule per kg Kelvin it is also given and the temperature difference 1000 to 100 degree. So, difference of the temperature is basically 900 Kelvin or degree centigrade. So, therefore, if you calculate this one 
then we can getting that 2025 kilo so this is the amount of the heat uh, transfer to the uh, to the oil bath from the heated sample that we can calculate 2025 kilojoule but here we are not getting any information about the time that means how much time it is required to reach from 1000 degree centigrade to 100 centigrade that information will we are not getting from this analysis so this i can say this is a kind of question we will get the answer later on if you follow this lecture notes also now why heat transfer why there is a necessary to analyze the heat transfer or we are talking about the heat transfer now if I take an example also for example the thermoflax and the coffee mock both are having the same content amount of the hot coffee and initial the temperature was 80 degree centigrade hot coffee. Now you pick if it follow that uh, structure of the thermoflax and coffee mock are different because thermoflax is basically surrounded by the insulation. So insulating material is there in the, the thermoflax and but there is no kind of such kind of insulating material is there in the coffee mock hot coffee in the coffee mug. So therefore, if you observe after sufficient time or the after same time, you can see the temperature of the coffee inside the uh, this uh, thermoflux and inside the coffee mug they are different. So therefore, amount of the heat loss by coffee mug is much more as compared to the this uh, thermoflux. So other way to reach the certain temperature or to reach the same temperature to reach the uh, ambient temperature this thermoflux the coffee contain, uh, containing within the thermoflux it takes longer time than the coffee mug but why uh, this kind of behavior we can observe and what is the uh, with this uh, particular phenomena based on these things then we can say that the rate of the this uh, heat loss the cool due to the less heat transfer rate is there so heat transfer rate is here less to the ambient but here heat transfer rate is much high. So that is why you are getting very quickly it cool down to the ambient temperature. So this phenomena allows act, uh, actually this heat transfer phenomena allows to design some particular system or just looking into the different engineering applications that actually interact heat with the surrounding. So that means here also heat is interacting with the surrounding and in these two cases there is a rate of the heat transfer are completely different. So therefore, with this particular principle if you follow you can apply the engineering application then there are so many systems has been developed. For example, a refrigeration system has been developed, heat pumps, passive cooling of the electronic components, thermal insulation all kind of the behavior or this kind of the system has been developed just to look into uh, these simple examples of the heat transfer phenomena or where there is a much difference of the heat transfer rate. So based on that this has been developed. Now we are talking about the heat transfer from one medium to another medium the surrounding but what are the different modes of the heat transfer. So heat transfer occurs three usually three different modes. So one is the conduction mode in this case is the transfer of the heat energy between the bodies that are in contact. So which is there is a need some medium which is in contact then heat will be transported uh, throughout the medium but without any motion of the molecules. So without any visible motion of the molecules. So in that cases heat transfer occurs and that is in happens in case of the conduction mode of the heat transfer and that is why this mode because here visible motion of the molecules are not associated so that is why this heat transfer conduction mode the heat transfer is predominant in case of the solid structure. So that is why it is applicable in case of the solid. Similarly another mode of the heat transfer that is the convection but in this cases convective mode of the heat transfer is associated with the bulk motion of the particle. So that actually carry over the heat and uh, transport from one position to another position. So that is the bulk motion of the particle when occurs from the high temperature to the low temperature side then in that case is that mode of the heat transfer we can say this is the convective mode of the heat transfer and that is why this is predominant in case of the fluid. So fluid motion uh, this convective mode of the fluid uh, mode of the heat transfer is usually observed in the in case of the uh, fluid. Now there is another mode of the uh, heat transfer that is called the radiation mode. So radiation mode here you can see the transfer of the heat occurs in the form of a electromagnetic wave. So therefore it may not be exclusive with the need one particular medium presence of the medium to transport the heat through the mode of the radiation. 
So, therefore, uh, it, here it is mentioned that does not require any kind of the medium in case of the radiative mode of the heat transfer. We can take an example also here if you see this is the source of the heat we can say consider. So, when source of the heat is connected to some conducting medium then heat will conduct it following this solid medium. So, where heat transfer occurs within the solid medium that we can say that it is a convective uh, conduction mode of the heat transfer. So, conduction occurs within this medium. So, here this there is no motion of the this particular solid. Now, heat will be transported also through the convection if you see the convective mode of the heat transfer. So, here the bulk motion of the fluid here. So, bulk motion of the fluid will be responsible for the transport the heat and in this cases the medium itself is transporting from one position to another position. So, in that cases we can say this is the uh, convection mode of the heat transfer. And here also since there is a of course all these cases there must be some kind of the temperature difference should exist then only heat transfer occurs from this heat source to the other side because here suppose here the source temperature is T1 and surrounding temperature or all other medium on the temperature is T2 for example. So, definitely T1 must be greater than T2 then only heat transfer occurs from the from this medium to another medium. So, some temperature difference should exist. Now, radiative mode of the heat transfer occurs with this in the form of the wave electromagnetic wave, but it is exclusively may not be required any kind of the medium. So, in this cases, but of course, some temperature difference must exist. So, I see this is the T2 temperature. So, T1 should be greater than T2. So, heat will be transported to the surrounding. So, these are the three basics mode of the uh, heat transfer usually occurs. Now, we will be focusing on the heat transfer by the by conduction. So, conduction heat transfer refers to the heat transfer between the two bodies or between the two parts or the parts of the same body when kept at the different temperature. So, within body also if there is a temperature difference exist definitely heat will transport it in the by the conduction mode. Now, heat transfer actually occurs through the molecules that are more or less stationary actually the molecules, but this is not transporting from one position to another position. It can be in the vibrating mode over um, one particular point, but that molecules may not be transported from uh, not uh, one position to another position. So, the heat conduction rate actually depends on the so many factors that is the shape of the medium, thickness of the wall, temperature difference and what are the type of the material because type of the material actually decided what are the uh, property that is called the thermal conductivity can vary depending upon the type or nature of the material. So, that is why type of the material is also important and shape of the medium means from uh, solid to solid, solid to liquid or solid to fluid like that depending upon the medium say it depends the this it depends on this thing. Then if there is a medium is there if a solid medium what is the thickness of the material or solid wall thickness of the wall it also depends on the heat transfer it depends on this also. And of course, when transporting the heat from one point to another point so the, what is the temperature difference between these two the rate of the heat transfer actually depends on the, if there is a temperature difference very high that means potential difference is very high then flow rate will be much more. So, here for that is why rate of the heat conduction actually depends on the temperature difference. So, the it is proportional to the rate of the I can say the Q is proportional to the temperature difference. So, temperature difference is much more potential difference is much thermal potential difference is much more. So, more rate of the heat transfer will also be higher and of course, but it reduces it also uh, proportional to 1 by inversely proportional to the thickness wall thickness. So, if it is solid medium definitely conduction occurs within the solid medium. So, it depends on the uh, wall thickness. And then of course, the, what is the area? Area means the direction of the heat flow and uh, normal to that we can consider the cross section area it also proportional to the cross section area. So, total amount of the heat transport or rate of the heat conduction is basically depends on this all these parameters and uh, based on this thing we can see that Fourier's law of heat conduction is actually uh, developed and in this cases if we consider the one dimension. So, q k if the heat flux rate or heat flux rate per unit area the heat flux per unit area we can see the heat flux rate here we represent the watt per meter square that means this is the rate of the heat transfer, but per unit area we can represent this thing. So, it is proportional to the temperature gradient that is the as per the Fourier's law of the heat conduction. So, temperature gradient means it is taking care of the temperature difference between these two as well as the distance between these two components. So, basically we are, we are here we are taking care of the whole thickness 
as well as the temperature difference between these two medium. So, here T1 and T2 between these two and thickness say x1, x2. So, depends on the x2 what is the thickness and temperature gradient we can calculate T2 minus T1. So, in say we can say dt by dx simply we can say like that. So, dt by dx it depends on the heat flux it proportional to that that is the temperature gradient we can see and then constant of proportionality is we can say that is the introduced with the k. The k is basically the heat flux direction. So, here we can see the uh, in the heat flow direction and k is the thermal conductivity. This is the kind of properties of the material. So, each and every material having thermal conductivity we already mentioned that these are the one typical property uh, of the which is associated to the heat transfer. So, thermal conductivity of the different materials are, are different. For example, in metallic material thermal conductivity is very high as compared to the ceramic. But unit of this thermal conductivity is basically watt per meter Kelvin uh, that is the SI unit. But I have mentioned here the some negative sign we, we mentioned that QK equal to minus K into dt by dx. This is the temperature gradient and K is thermal conductivity and we have considered the negative sign. Negative sign used to because temperature decreases in the direction of the heat flow. So, in the direction of the heat flow this is the temperature T1 is greater than T2. So, when a T2 since T2 is less um, and T1 greater than T2. So, that is why when you calculate the gradient the gradient becomes negative we consider the negative that is why you put in the negative sign. I mean to say that the slope is basically a negative in this case. Now, sign convention for conduction heat flow. So, we can see that direction of the heat flow if it is a, suppose this is the direction x and uh, y direction t and heat flow is the direction of the heat flow it is clearly mentioned here and suppose this is the temperature distribution as a function of x. So, at any point we can calculate the slope. The slope we can calculate here is the, the slope based on this thing x and this temp variable x temperature t here we can see the dt by dx or which is if you say usually know this is a x axis and this is y axis how we can calculate that uh, slope dy by dx indicates the slope. So, dy by dx equal to here the dt by is equivalent to dt by dx. So, if this dx with the sign convention if the heat flow direction is this one then in this case dt by dx is basically positive. Now, if the direction of the heat flow is this, this direction of the heat flow and in this case the temperature distribution should looks like this and here you can see this is the, uh, the slope we can calculate that dt by dx at any point what is the temperature difference delta t by delta x which is dt by dx but here dt by dx is basically negative. So, uh, in this case direction of the heat flow. So, we have to be careful to look into the which direction of the heat flow and what is the uh, temperature gradient and when you follow this convention we can say that use we write the heat flux heat of the minus k into dt by dx. This is the usual convention to write the Fourier's law of the heat conduction in one dimension because here only x variable is there. So, it means that slope is positive means temperature increases towards the positive x direction then the heat flow should occurs minus x direction. So, that means positive slope means the temperature difference it temperature increases towards the x when the heat flow and uh, so heat flow is actually occurs in the negative direction. Similarly, if the temperature decreases along the positive x direction then heat flow should occurs the positive x direction. So, uh, we should follow this convention in case of the, to calculate the heat flux at for the Fourier's law of the heat conduction. Now, since the heat conduction is basically associated uh, with the this properties, the thermal conductivity specific heat and thermal depressivity, we should little bit discuss about these three different properties with taking some example also. Thermal conductivity is basically a measure of the ability of particular material to conduct through to conduct the heat through it through its volume. So, therefore, we can say that thermal conductivity to water is a 0 0.607 watt per meter watt per meter Kelvin and for iron it is 80.2 watt per meter Kelvin. So, we can see the, in this cases for the water and the iron there is a huge difference in the uh, thermal conductivity value in this case. So, since iron has the higher conductivity value than water therefore, it can conduct heat more easily. 
so that it means that heat conduct can more easily to occur in case of the iron as compared to the uh, water so similarly when there is a the insulating material because in conducting material the heat conductivity th uh, thermal conductivity is actually uh, very poor uh, in that case so that means uh, it may not able to conduct the heat very quickly from within the within this, within this uh, medium I, I mean to say that within the insulating medium and other cases when thermal conductivity is very high for in case of the air it can very quickly transport the heat from one point to the another point within this body so that is the interpretation of the thermal conductivity of a particular material now the conductivity can also be visualized from the Fourier's law of the heat conduction so once we understand Fourier's law of the heat conduction is that we already mentioned that Fourier's law of the heat conduction qk equal to minus k dt by dx so here the we represent this in the for the flux that means per unit surface area now if we total we can say that total heat transfer minus we can introduce the a area k dt by dx so here it represents the in terms of the what but here in terms of the what per in si unit per unit area meter square so here is a difference which is simply multiply but we should multiply when the heat conduction occurs along the x direction but we should consider the area normal to this so that is the cross section area so therefore want to write q equal to minus k uh, convert q equal to minus k a dt by dx we can further explore it in terms of the temperature difference t1 minus t2 because t1 is the higher temperature t2 is the lower temperature so we just eliminate the negative sign here so that's why i have written t1 minus t2 here the temperature difference k thermal conductivity a is the cross section area and l is the thickness of this particular material now from here we can calculate what is the value of the k k in terms of the other parameter now we can easily calculate what is the if you know the units of the other parameters then we can calculate the k is the thermal conductivity now thermal conductivity is equal to the amount of the heat transfer so it is equal to the amount of the heat transfer heat transfer q k and through a material having a unit thickness so l should be unit thickness per unit area so a is the unit area and for a unit temperature difference so this temperature difference is the unit so all other 1 1 1 then k is equivalent to qk assuming that other thickness surface area and temperature difference unit so that's why we define the thermal conductivity is equal to the amount of the heat transfer amount of the heat transfer through a material having a unit thickness unit temperature difference per unit temperature difference per unit area and that is that is the measure of the thermal conductivity so we can easily calculate what should be the unit of the thermal conductivity so k equal to q k into l q k is the watt length is the meter and a is the area meter square and temperature difference either degree centigrade or say kelvin so therefore from here you can say that meter one so watt per meter kelvin so this is the another way to just identify what should be the unit of the thermal conductivity of a material now once you understand the thermal conductivity then we can look into the specific heat so specific heat of a material is defined of the amount of the heat required to increase the temperature of the material by one degree centigrade having a mass of the one kg so therefore specific heat actually indicate what is the heat content with the how much heat content uh, for a particular material so specific it is also referred to as the materials ability to store the energy heat energy so that is the interpretation of the specific uh, heat so material is having higher specific heat it means that they can store much amount of the heat energy in other words it actually requires the heat to raise the large amount of the heat is required to raise its temperature for example specific heat of the water is this one 4.18 kilojoule per kg kelvin and whereas iron it is 0.45 kilojoule per kg kelvin so it means that water can store more heat than iron because iron is thermal conductivity is very high very quickly uh, heat can be dissipated through the iron so that's why the heat content or store of the heat energy capability is less in case of the iron as compared to the water so this way you can interpret what is the specific energy so mathematically q equal to m cp delta t that we know what is the total heat content within a body when there is a temperature difference 
exist delta t and mass of the system specific heat of the system and from here we can estimate what is the specific heat of a system and we can we can see so specific heat of a system is this basically similar way what we the specific heat of a system what is the actually heat content per unit mass per unit temperature difference so if m equal to 1 unit mass and per unit temperature difference then cp is equivalent to q what is the heat content within the body so this is another uh, type of the thermal properties of the material and which is well defined because this values of the this thing it is a well defined uh, property uh, in case of the water or iron uh, in this case. So, once you understand both these cases then there is another uh, measure of the property that is called the thermal diffusivity. So, thermal diffusivity transient the heat conduction material property comes frequently because, because thermal diffusivity we sometimes use this thing but it is a thermal diffusivity is a combination of the heat conduction the ratio of the heat conduction to the heat stored. So, is the ratio of the heat conduction mean that actually depend in terms of the thermal conductivity? What is the, the effectiveness of a particular meter that can quickly transmit the heat? That is the measure of the thermal conductivity. So, thermal conductivity divided by the heat storage that is a specific heat and this is specific heat we can rho Cp we can make the heat storage. So, K by rho Cp is basically indication of the thermal diffusivity and the uni, SI unit of thermal diffusivity equal meter square per second. Now, what is the interpretation of the thermal diffusivity? So, here thermal diffusivity high values of the thermal diffusivity basically depicts that the, the heat conduction part is much more alpha is much more or this is very low in that cases uh, alpha is basically very high. Okay. Other cases alpha is low it means that K should low and rho Cp should high that also indicates the lower values of the thermal diffusivity. Now, the material will transfer heat into the medium while stores low, less amount of the heat. In this cases, the it can transmit the heat to the medium is the, the conduct thermal conduct is much more or less storage values of the heat store uh, is there. So, that indicates the higher values of the thermal diffusivity. Similarly, lower thermal diffusivity indicates that the material will store uh, large amount of the heat, but it will transmit the heat or it will transport the heat will be the less. So, in that case that indicates the metal is having the low thermal diffusivity. Here you can get some basics of the uh, thermal conductivity, thermal diffusivity values. So, just to get some understanding the different types of the material, we can see that thermal conductivity diamond is the thermal conductivity is very high 2300. And silver thermal conductivity also very high if we know this thing material silver is very high then copper 401 gold 317 we can see the aluminum. So, these are the four uh, common material we can find out the thermal conductivity actually very high in this case and other way thermal diffusivity if we look into this and thermal diffusivity is and the 149 very high and here also uh, second high and then third high is the 113 although the copper is the thermal conductivity is very high but thermal diffusivity is less as compared to the gold. Similarly, uh, aluminum also little less in this case 97.5 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, it means that I can say that thermal conductivity is very high does not mean that thermal diffusivity will would be the very high because thermal diffusivity is basically thermal diffusivity is depends on the not only thermal conductivity it is the heat storage capability of this particular material also that means the specific heat and the density of this particular material it depends on this thing. So, we are getting some understanding but if you look into the iron is the moderate values of the thermal conductivity and also thermal diffusivity is the moderate value. But other cases if the mercury say glass brick brick is more or like a insulating material. So, in this cases the thermal conductivity is very poor less and the thermal diffusivity is also uh, very less in this cases. So, that is why we can see we can compare the different types of the material their thermal conductivity values as well as the thermal diffusivity of all these values and this will be helpful to understanding the when you try to establish the different kind of the manufacturing process and their heat transfer phenomena associated with the manufacturing process which is related to the different types of the material. That is all for this particular sub module. 
and next we will try to discuss the remaining part of the basics of the heat conduction. Thank you very much for your kind attention.